Hello everyone and welcome back to part development in Kerbal Space Program. In this video I present my model of the GSLV Mark III, uh, which is India's most recent rocket from the ISRO. And uh, well, I did my best with it. Uh, the textures at the bottom here are actually from a photograph. Uh, so if you get really close up to it, it's a bit blurry, but I think it's come out pretty well. And Certainly, this is a better rendition than currently exists of this rocket for Kerbal Space Program or many other places. The engine model, I did my best. It uh, certainly looks like the photographs. Uh, so this is the the derivative of the Vickers engine. It's actually the HPVE-1. And then up in the upper stage is the CE-20. This is a 200 kilonewton cryogenic engine. And I've given it two ignitions uh, to help with getting things into geosynchronous orbit, though it may or may not actually have two ignitions. For instance, the Ariane 5 manages with just one ignition on its upper stage, so I don't know how this works, but it's got a little finicky model there, and um, hopefully that's accurate enough. In, in real life, there's like a bundle of wires and tubes going all over the place around it. This is like the central portion of it but there's uh, quite a lot of other stuff going on with that engine, uh, much more so than the core engines at the bottom. But anyway, let me tell you how to put it together. Um, first of all, you'll probably want some payload of your own. And uh, what I've got here right now, let me get rid of everything and then I'll search for it so you know how to get it, is just a tiny little core plus a 14 ton tank of Avgas. And we're going to send the rocket into low Earth orbit, and that is not usually what it does. It is, uh, the GSLV means Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, so it's trying to go to Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit, uh, to which it can deliver 4.5 tons, or possibly more, but it's rated at 4.5 tons. Uh, for low Earth orbit, I've estimated that I can do 14 tons, and that's what we're going to try out here. But you just type in GSLV, once you get the mod from the video description, the mod will be in the video description. If you're not using it in Realism Overhaul, you should de delete the Realism Overhaul configuration just in case, so that doesn't cause any confusion. Otherwise, things might not work quite right. Um, but anyway, once you have this, th I don't have an adapter, so you have to put a decoupler right now. Um, the tank, uh, you can. there's probably an adapter from a different mod that you can use, but this is what I'm going with right now. And I want the piping to face outside so it doesn't interfere with the boosters. So like that. Okay, and then the fairings. I don't have them being placed in symmetry right now. So one at a time. I don't have the Indian flag on the fairings right now. That was a thing that I sort of missed out on. So they're just plain at this point. But we have plenty of other markings. Now here is the CE-20. The first stage has a decoupler at the top, so you don't need a separate decoupler. It'll decouple itself. And at the bottom, we have the HPVE core engines. And they actually have two nodes, one up top like this. But if you want to put it on this launcher, there's another node like that. Okay. One thing I one other thing I didn't model is the SRB decouplers because I couldn't get a good look at them. One complication was that uh, there's been three launches of this and each one looks a little bit different, especially the upper stage. Um, this shroud here, this gray bit, on uh, some models it's actually just a fabric, and in a few pictures they actually show the bare tanks basically. This is uh, struts and a shroud over the bottom of the hydrogen tank and the top of the oxygen tank. And so that's what's going on there. But that looks different uh, on different occasions. There's also actually different lettering and other things going on. And the earlier GSLV Mark III launches, the boosters had normal pointy cones, uh, whereas I've modeled the conf conformal cones on the latest model. So... But first, let's get the uh, radial decouplers, like so. And then the S200 boosters. 
like so. And what we would like to do to line it up properly is uh, have the bottom of the skirt, uh, th this portion of the booster, match the bottom end of the nozzles of the core engines. Okay, there we go. And uh, because this was all smooth, I didn't want to make them the top of it a separate part for decoupling. And in any case, I'm not entirely sure where the separation motors on these boosters are. They could be over here. They, I don't know if they have them on the nose cone. I couldn't really see very well. So I'm just going to put them where they are functionally relevant. Okay, so that should be good enough. And then staging. The SRBs light on their own first. And then the core engines ignite at T plus two minutes. And then the boosters separate. Then the first stage separates. Second stage ignites. And then I don't know, I swear I made these things have a vertical indicator, but nope, we've got a horizontal indicator. So, yeah, those are the fairings, and then that's the decoupling of the payload. So all we need now is launch clamps. Um, ignore the American flag. We are actually uh, in India. We're launching from India. Okay, and so throttle up, SAS is on. The lighting is pretty intense on this right now. And ignition. The gimbling on the boosters is at five degrees, and that should be enough. That's what the little side pods are for. They contain the hydraulic fluid for uh, turning the nozzles. Now because this is actually a geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle trying to get a load into low earth orbit, um, we basically have to toss the upper stage up a little bit and let it fall back down to complete its burn because it's got a long burn time. That burn time is more suited to launching the geosynchronous satellites. There is a thrust curve on the boosters. I basically copied the thrust curve from a Titan booster, though uh, the actual thrust curve for these boosters is available, so I might do some tweaking later. You can get a sense for the trail off of the thrust with the current acceleration there. And at two minutes, we ignite the core. Two minutes and eight seconds, we separate the boosters. We're gonna hold this at 25 degrees to give the upper stage enough time. So, southeastern India and Sri Lanka in view. If you are looking for a good PSLV, by the way, there is one in real scale boosters. I don't know about a GSLV Mark II. I may look into that down the road, if I can't find one. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairing separation. Probably long overdue. I think we should just hold 25 degrees for now. It has fairly low thrust weight ratio because it's carrying such a heavy load. Now, uh, if you take a look at the burn time numbers for this engine, you may see that uh, has something like 10 minutes, but it starts off with, it seems like, less than that here. And that's because normally it doesn't operate at full thrust. Uh, it ranges from 180 kilonewtons to 220 kilonewtons, but normally operates at 189, which is the burn time you'll normally see 
And so uh, since we're uh, running it at its full thrust, which wouldn't be normal, um, that is why its burn time is a little bit lower than normally indicated. So again, we're sort of tossing it a little bit higher than we're aiming for, and it's going to start coming back down, but that's normal. Very typical situation for something that's meant, any launcher that's meant for geosynchronous orbit, when it's lofting loads into low Earth orbit instead, it'll tend to have to keep a high pitch. This one doesn't have to do quite as much actually because it's at 200 kilonewtons. Uh, it's much worse when you're dealing with engines like the upper stage of Ariane 5 or the upper stage of Atlas 5. Also, the upper stage of Delta 4 is about half the thrust of what this has. The upper stage of Ariane 6 that's coming up, the Vinci engine, has about the same thrust as this. We're gaining on the vertical speed, but I would like to sort of hold it at a higher... I'm aiming for about 180 kilometers here. Okay, and... shut down. 200 by 185. So, there you have it. The GSLV Mark III. I don't have any other particular caveats to say. Uh, the link will be in the video description. So, have fun with it. If you have any questions, do please ask. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.